Welcome back. We continue our missing series tonight with the disappearance of Aubrey Dameron. The 25-year-old woman vanished after leaving her family home in the small town of Grove, Oklahoma. Aubrey told her mom at 3.30 one morning that she was going to meet someone, only she was never seen again. Now her family fears the worst, believing that her disappearance could be the result of a hate crime. Marky Martin has been in Oklahoma covering this story for us and is live there tonight with the very latest. Marky. Good evening, Marnie. It's been nearly three years since anybody has seen Aubrey Dameron. The 25-year-old is a transgender woman. She is indigenous. She's part of the Cherokee Nation here in Oklahoma. And her family really is working with very little in terms of evidence or clues or leads to fuel this search. But they do wonder if her choice to transition is at the heart of her disappearance. As a person, she had the biggest heart. She loved people. She loved life. When Pam Smith talks about her niece, Aubrey Dameron, she prefers to think of the good times. Aunt Pam, I love you. How are you doing? And a great big hug and a big sloppy kiss on the cheek. And sometimes I get irritated and be like, ah. but you know, I what I wouldn't give to have one of those right now. It's been almost three years since she's had one of those kisses. At 3:30 in the morning on March 9, 2019. Aubrey told her mom she was going out to meet someone. She was wearing black jacket, black skirt, black boots, the black netting hoses. She left her family home in Grove, Oklahoma, and slipped into the night. Her phone last pinged right here at this mobile home park, just a few hundred yards from her own house. She goes missing March of 2019, and immediately the thoughts that go through your head are what? My immediate thought is that it's a hate crime. That was my very first thing. Christian Fencer is Aubrey's uncle, but being six months apart, more like siblings and each other's closest confidant, coming out to each other as gay before sharing it with the world. Being in Grove, it's not really diverse whatsoever. There's not really a lot of things that go on outside of the ordinary. Christian remembers he and Aubrey being bullied, kids shouting derogatory slurs, hurling rocks at them after school. This video is pertaining to um, who I am today as a transgendered woman. I said I was going to make this video, so um, yes, I'm Aubrey Dameron. It's nice to meet you guys. Her transition, something not often seen in rural Oklahoma or the Cherokee Nation of which Aubrey was a citizen. Pam and Christian think that could be behind her disappearance and the reason why they say police told the family they couldn't do much to investigate. Because of her lifestyle, we don't think she's a missing person. I said, because she's transgender? Because she's native? You know? He says, no, because of her lifestyle. I said, so you're telling me that my niece's life isn't worth searching for? And he says, that's not what I'm saying. I said, that's exactly what you're saying. He said, well, we don't have the resources. Those resources still haven't come. For almost three years, the family has organized their own searches, drained ponds, set up a Facebook page, and put up missing persons flyers all over town. Her case was mishandled from the beginning. She was treated like a second-class citizen in a First Nation country. Our crew visited Aubrey's home, the last place she was seen. We eventually found her mother in the next town over. Good morning. I'm looking for a Jennifer or an Alice. Right here. That's me and Aubrey. You were the last person to see her. They're the first camera crew that I'm ever speaking to. She says she has no idea what happened to her daughter, but does believe she's dead. I felt my child pass. A year ago, when a mother and a child has a bond, and I felt it, I hit the floor. Aubrey's mom also telling us the family hasn't gotten the help from investigators they were hoping for. Is there anybody at the department who can speak on the Aubrey Dameron case? Any media inquiry contacts? Uh, not in this office. The local sheriff's office refusing to go on camera or comment on the case, referring us to the FBI. Hi there, this is Marky Martin with News Nation. I'm trying to reach an agent, Anthony Caraccio. But even with few leads, little evidence, and limited support from law enforcement, Christian still believes he will someday know what happened to Aubrey. I believe that we will eventually get the answers that we receive, we deserve. 
I believe that someone's going to come forward. The entire thing's just going to blow open. And until then, the aunt and uncle turned detectives. Val, they'll keep digging. She was my keeper, and now I don't have a keeper, but I just I push forward. I used to go to sleep and have my phone turned up as loud as it could be, and I'd doze off, and I'd wake up in a panic and be like, did she call? Did somebody call and say they found her? If she is alive, what, what, would, you, what would you tell your daughter? I would tell her that I love her so much. And to come home, come home to me. And Marnie, as you can see from the story, authorities still really remaining tight lipped about this case. The Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation turning down our request for an interview, same with the local sheriff's office there. And the FBI has yet to return any of our calls or messages. Marnie. Which just speaks to the frustration this family and so many others feel when they feel as though law enforcement isn't prioritizing their loved one. Marky Martin, as always, thank you. Anyone with information about Aubrey's disappearance is asked to contact the FBI or the Cherokee National Marshal Service. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.